I am interested in the evidence around lifestyle and the development of cancer and also the recurrence of cancer in cancer survivors. And my particular area of interest is the translation of that evidence into current practice and policy. So people like the World Cancer Research Fund have, and indeed the American Cancer Society have a set of recommendations for cancer survivors about avoiding excess weight, uh, being physically active and following an appropriate sort of diet. Um, and we know that evidence, but how can we actually do something about it? So the research that I'm presenting here at NCRI is about what's the patient view, cancer survivors, um, how, do, how would they feel about getting advice, would they welcome it, would they think they were being got at or whatever. And then a questionnaire survey that we did, uh, work funded by Cancer Research UK, on um, clinicians' views about giving um, patients advice. So in the qualitative work um, by um, cancer survivors, a very mixed bag of responses with uh, some people saying they would really have welcomed very specific advice about diet, particularly in the immediate post-surgery period, being uncertain what to eat, what their bodies could cope with. But in the longer term, um, being uncertain about how physically active they should do, would it do them harm to be to start jogging or should they be looking after themselves by being more sedentary? So confusion, um, inability to source appropriate literature about what they should be doing and to find guidance on that topic. Um, so the, the nurse specialists that they would see were not necessarily specialists in lifestyle, so, so feeling that they were kind of lost for, for guidance. Um, but also patients saying that they ate very well and were very physically active before they got the cancer, so, so why would that help them at all? And wanting to avoid this sort of victim blaming feeling, oh, they're big and fat, you know, they're being picked on because they're fat. And recognising obesity is a very sensitive subject. Um, and we had this, um, this patient saying they would welcome advice to try and stack the odds against recurrence. We cannot say that by changing lifestyle we can absolutely prevent recurrence, but let's try and do what we can to reduce the risk. So the next piece of work um, was a questionnaire survey followed up by some in-depth telephone interviews. It was a questionnaire survey of colorectal clinicians, that's both doctors and nurses. And we asked them what they thought about the evidence on lifestyle, particularly about weight loss. And there was a clear awareness of this, although some scepticism about the evidence. Um, and we asked them, well, with their patients who were overweight and obese, did they always give advice? And it's true to say that they didn't always give advice. Some gave verbal advice. Very few found good written resources they could use. And we then went on to explore, well, what are the barriers for that? What, why? Why didn't they give advice? And some scepticism about the evidence, but also um, time, uh, recognising that they're very, very busy people, and within NHS clinic appointments, there isn't time to go into lifestyle um, advice. Um, and also, was it their responsibility? Should it be done in primary care? Would that be more appropriate? Um, and they didn't want to lose the good relationship with their patient. They felt it was out with their comfort zone, talking about somebody's obesity. They were unable to help. So a whole raft of reasons. But also um, recognising that they would, many said they would welcome training in weight management which I think would have to include about how you approach the subject because I think it can be, can be tricky. Uh, I think that we need to be able to look at effective um, communications that can help to A, prompt change in behaviour related to diet, physical activity and uh, for people to know their weight and their weight category, for people to be supported to move into doing something about that and I really don't think lecturing is the way to do it. I think there are many, there are many approaches. It's very difficult to get um, a referral to a dietitian. There are very few dietitians in this country but I think uh, many nurse specialists can help open the door, can help introduce them to br through brief interventions and I think perhaps in primary care that can be picked up either on a one-to-one -one basis or through group work and indeed there are also the commercial sector through, through group clubs. So I think making people aware of the problem but always in a helpful and supportive manner.